In the mid 1900s, Tony Romo's grandfather, Ramiro Romo Sr., immigrated from Mexico to San Antonio, Texas as a teenager. Ramiro always felt that America, and I quote, was the country of opportunity. Thanks to his foresight, Ramiro's son, Ramiro Romo Jr., joined the Navy and later became a carpenter and a construction worker, making him more financially successful than his dad, which was always the goal. Each generation gets a little bit further. Then Ramiro Jr.'s son, Antonio Ramiro Romo, aka Tony Romo, well, let's just say dude and held down the entire family tree, becoming a multi-millionaire only a couple generations later. So let's go back to the beginning and summarize Tony Romo's entire football career. And I wanna discuss why I believe the narrative surrounding Tony Romo has been completely misrepresented from the very start. This is what happened to Antonio Ramiro Romo, AKA Tony Romo. Cue the way. Tony Romo was always athletic and competed in everything from baseball, basketball, tennis, and even golf when he was a kid. Most of those he continued through high school, but football became his main thing. He ended up starting at quarterback during his junior and senior seasons in high school. And while he didn't win many games, he did do well enough to earn a scholarship to Eastern Illinois, a D1 AA school, also known as an FCS school. Tony Romo was that FCS quarterback playing way better than he should be on NCAA 14. His rating is like a 60, but the dude playing like he at least an 88 overall. That was Tony Romo. The small school nobody outplayed his coach's expectations and became the first player in Ohio Valley Conference history to win the Walter Payton Award. That's an award given to the most outstanding D1 AA player every single year. Romo won Conference Player of the Year every single year he was there. We're talking from his very first snap till his very last snap, he was the best player in the conference bar none. And that little feat would land him in the Eastern Illinois Hall of Fame years later. But in 2003, Tony Romo was not invited to the NFL Combine. And honestly, his football career could have ended right there. But he caught a stroke of luck. See, each year as many of the top quarterback prospects opt to not throw at the Combine, the NFL ends up needing a few extra arms to come through and just throw some of the drills. The drills meant to highlight the receivers and running backs and other positions. So the Walter Payton Award winner ended up getting a last minute invite to the combine just to throw drills. So at least he got into the building, but while he was there, Tony Romo was just an afterthought. You gotta remember, this was 2003. Carson Palmer had just won Heisman. Current Cardinals coach Cliff Kingsbury was fresh off a of Big 12 Offensive Player of the Year award. Yeah, this was that long ago. Then you had other cats like Rex Grossman and Kyle Bowler who were also soaking up attention. Columnist Rick Goslin and his partner sat at an eight man table where only three chairs was full. Rick, his partner, and Tony Romo. Mind you, the room was full, but nobody else was interested in sitting down with Romo other than these two guys. And honestly, Rick was interested. He talked his boy into sitting down with him. Romo ended up making an impression on Rick. And by the time the interview was over, Rick had raised Tony up on his board from undrafted to an amazing sixth round value. Unfortunately for Tony, no NFL team seemed to even value him that high as he went undrafted. But following the draft, then Cowboys assistant Sean Payton quickly signed Tony to a free agent contract, making him officially a Dallas Cowboy in 2003. Now, Romo was the third string quarterback and wouldn't start a game for the Cowboys for three years. During that time, he sat behind Quincy Carter, Chad Hutchinson, a 40-year-old Vinny Testaverde, then the Cowboys traded for Drew Henson, and Romo nearly got cut several times, but ended up getting saved when Quincy Carter dealt with his substance abuse problem. By 2006, Tony Romo was still clinging on, still holding the clipboard, going to practice, and grinding away as a backup quarterback. And then something interesting almost happened. Something that honestly could change a huge chunk of NFL history 
had it actually gone through. When Sean Payton, the guy who had brought Tony to the Cowboys in the first place, left to become head coach of the New Orleans Saints, before he ever had a chance to sign Drew Brees, he actually tried to trade a third round pick for Tony Romo. Pretty sure Saints fans are hella relieved, but at the time, Sean Payton felt Romo was the perfect person to run his offense. He offered a third round pick, but Jerry Jones refused to trade. Bruh, that move could have changed so much as Drew Brees was coming off the shoulder surgery. And you gotta remember, Drew had been good, but not great when he was with the Chargers. So had this move happened, one of two things could have happened. Either Tony Romo is the Super Bowl champ or the Saints never end up getting that Super Bowl. Now I'm a big fan of Drew Brees and I don't think Tony is nearly the leader that Drew is. He obviously doesn't have quite the numbers that Drew has, but you do have to admit that Romo would have likely done a bit better than he ended up doing in Dallas if he had Sean Payton as a coach instead of Bill Parcells who was a defensive coach and then Jason Garrett, who was an offensive coach, but he's not Sean Payton. Could have made a big difference in Romo's and Drew Brees' career, but the Saints end up doing just fine, so I'm pretty sure they're happy that things went the way they went. Instead, Romo finally worked his way up to take over the starting job for the Cowboys in week four, when he led them to a win over the Panthers and threw for 270 yards in a TD. Tony went on to lead the Cowboys to the playoffs that year, and this is where things start to go down here for Tony Romo. In that very first playoff game, he didn't have a great game to start with 189 passing yards one touchdown but no turnover you know not at quarterback at least with a minute 19 left the cowboys were set to kick a 19 yard chip shot to take the lead in that game and probably go on to win it but romo despite the fact that he was the starting quarterback was also still the guy that holds the field goal and y'all pretty much know the rest he muffs it tries to run for it gets tackled on the two cowboys lose and the narrative that still follows him till this day is born. Tony Romo sucks. I ain't gonna lie, bro, that was a tough break. You can argue that he never should have even been in that situation in the first play, but it just can't happen. It can't happen like that, bro, but it did, and it, it scarred his career. It really did. Over in New Orleans, where Tony Romo almost landed, Drew Brees had a Pro Bowl season, but due to an injury, he didn't end up attending. The next guy up, Tony Romo. So technically, Tony Romo ended up making his first Pro Bowl that year. Over the next eight years, Tony Romo was never the best, but always one of the top quarterbacks in the NFL year in and year out, at least from a statistical standpoint. During that eight year stretch, Tony finished top 10 in passing yards in a season four different times. He finished top three in passing yards per season three different times. But that's just yardage, you know what I'm saying? What about touchdowns? You gotta put actual points on the board. He was second in passing touchdowns in 2007, sixth in 2008, 10th in 2009, 5th in 2011, 6th in 2012, back up the 5th in 2013, and then 2014, getting even better, he finished 4th. And he was a cat that pushed the ball down the field, especially earlier in his career. From 2007 to 2012, he was always toward the top of the league in 20-yard completions and 40-yard completions. He was a gunslinger, he took risks, he was not a dink and dunk quarterback. So why do people think Tony Romo sucks? Big games, man big games. Tony Romo had some amazing games. He had hella fourth quarter comebacks. He has one of the top passer ratings in the fourth quarter in NFL history. That's a fact. But with all of that said, he often came up small in big games. He just could not seem to get it done when the majority of people were actually watching. Romo has started to make a little bit of a habit of kind of melting down in December. We already talked about the muff field goal in 2006. In 2007, Romo's new high profile girlfriend, Jessica Simpson, put dude in a light that would magnify everything even more than just being the Dallas Cowboys quarterback, which obviously already comes with a certain amount of scrutiny. Yeah, that year was crazy. Jessica would be on camera every time Romo threw a pic, they zoom in all on the face, and it just kind of painted this weird picture. And I think Cowboys fans started to feel like Romo wanted to be a bit more of a celebrity than the Dallas Cowboys quarterback. Whether or not that was true, that was just kind of the picture that was painted. Now you gotta understand the first five to seven years that Tony Romo was with the Cowboys, like their offensive line was not what it is today. Their defense was not what it is today. Tony Romo was one of the most pressured quarterbacks in the league for a good bit of his early career. He ran around back there and he made a lot of plays, but he also threw a lot of picks 
and he took a lot of hits. These would start to stack up over the course of his career. But with all of that said, in just his second year as a starter, Tony Romo made the playoffs once again in 2008. Then came a lapse in judgment. During Wild Card Weekend, Tony Romo, who many Cowboys fans are starting to feel, wants to be a celebrity more than he does a Super Bowl winning quarterback. Besides, during Wild Card Weekend, when the Cowboys have a bye, to go to Mexico with his celebrity girlfriend, Jessica Simpson. Now check it out. Whether or not this has anything to actually do with the game, I doubt it. Like, I don't really think it matters, but, from a narrative standpoint, we know that's just a terrible move, bro. It is a terrible move because if you lose the game, it is now your girlfriend's fault. You feel what I'm saying? Like, you don't want that, bro. That's going to create all kind of issues in a locker room, on the field, and at the crib. That sucks. Nobody wants that. Bad move by Tony, man. Just vacation in your big ass house. You know what I'm saying? Watch film get ready for the game coming up next week it's important again second year as a starter lapse in judgment in my opinion that was a mistake and i think that also hurt his reputation a good bit then nfc divisional game game on the line what happens tony romo comes up small once again throwing an interception in the end zone with the game on the line and the cowboys end up losing to the giants these are the reasons I would never argue that Tony Romo is a great quarterback. He was not a great quarterback. Great quarterbacks rise to the occasion in these moments. Romo would always come up just short and be unable to do so. But I still scoff at the notion that he sucks. But yet and still, every time the vast majority of people turned on their TV to see Tony Romo, he was making plays like this, and it leaves a lasting image in your head. The following year, 2008, the Cowboys started out 8-4. and four. But... In December, Romo throws the game ceiling interception versus the Steelers and loses. Throws two picks versus the Ravens and loses. Then had three turnovers versus the Eagles and got smacked 44 to six in the season finale, making him 0-3 in his career in elimination games. And after that L, his fate was forever sealed as a quarterback that choked or that couldn't get it done in the biggest moments. I ain't even gonna lie, dude was on his last legs, man. Three meltdowns in a row, his first three years as a starting quarterback, things were not looking great. But in 2009, he finally came through late in the season. The Cowboys finished that season winning four of their last six games, and in those games, Romo threw 11 touchdowns and only two interceptions. The Cowboys made it to the wild card, and Romo finally got that playoff monkey off his back by beating the Eagles 34-14. Sweet payback for the ass whooping they had put on the Cowboys the year before in the season finale. In that game, Tony Romo completed 65% of his passes and threw 244 yards and two touchdowns with no interceptions. Still, the Cowboys got smacked in the very next round as Tony Romo got sacked six times and they took an L to the Vikings. Romo had improved. He had finally come through in the playoffs, but based on all the bad will that he had already banked, winning that one playoff game just wasn't enough to change the way people saw him. Unfortunately for him, those six sacks and all the other sacks that came before that really started to take a toll on his body. The injuries really started to pile up and these were serious injuries. Fractured clavicle, fractured rib, back surgery, herniated disc, fractured vertebrae, man. Dude got really beat up behind a not so great offensive line. And to his credit, he kept trying to tough it out, kept trying to come back, but ended up only making the playoffs one more time six years later in 2014. This was pretty much the last year we'd ever see Tony Romo, like the actual Tony Romo, playing football that is. The Cowboys once again made the playoffs and Tony Romo once again came through in the wild card round. Then the Cowboys faced the Green Bay Packers in the divisional round. And this was Tony's opportunity to change the narrative on his entire career. It's your biggest moments, your best moments, and your latest moments that people generally remember when it comes to athletic career. This was Tony's last opportunity. He had to beat the Green Bay Packers. Fourth quarter, nine minutes left. Cowboys trail 21-26. Romo drives the team down the field. Couple runs from DeMarco Murray, couple passes from Tony Romo. They get all the way down to Green Bay's 38. Tony ends up taking a sack on second down and the next play he completes a nine yard pass creating a fourth and two. What happens next is one of the most controversial calls in NFL history. Tony throws it up to Des Bryant who catches the ball 
on the one yard line. It's ruled a catch. Cowboys are gonna punch it in and take the lead. But wait a second, the Packers challenge. And somehow, the call is overturned. And Dez called it mania is born. Now look, it took years after the fact, but the NFL did eventually admit that they screwed this up. And Dez Bryant did in fact catch the ball. I'm not a Cowboys fan, but I am a fan of the refs getting stuff right and not robbing cats, bro. Like, I felt like they got robbed. And apparently the NFL came out and they felt the exact same way. But either way, at the time, the call is overturned, the Cowboys lose, Romo's career is basically over. Unfortunately for Tony Romo, he was robbed of his final opportunity to change the way the football world remembers him as a player. Now don't get it twisted, this was a better catch than it was a throw, but it was still a great read and a great throw when you got a prime Dez Bryant one on one. The balls that it took to throw that up on fourth and two, no, like you know what I'm saying? To the very end, Romo stayed true to his gunslinger mentality. But ultimately, the call is overturned, that game is over, and Green Bay goes on to lose to Seattle in the very next round. Now, check it out. If that play stands, there's no guarantee that the Cowboys score, and there's no guarantee that they hold on to the lead if they do score and win that game. But it's very likely that that's what happens. Of course, now we'll never know because if Tony Romo wins that game and goes on to beat the Seahawks and just makes it to the Super Bowl, I think people remember him differently for at least playing in a Super Bowl. And the Cowboys had faced the Seahawks earlier that same season and won 30 to 23 as Russell Wilson struggled in that game, Romo balled out, and DeMarco Murray outplayed Marshawn Lynch. Of course, it's obvious that that does not guarantee that that's how it would've went the second time around. I just wanted to point that out to say that, yeah, they definitely had a chance to win that game and get to the Super Bowl. So at the end of the day, Tony Romo did not have an illustrious career. He had some highs and some lows, especially early in his career when he was still having that yearly December meltdown. But when he got a little bit older and a little bit wiser was taking care of the ball better in 2014 that was a tony romo that had grown as a player he threw 34 touchdowns and only nine interceptions that year he led the entire nfl in passer rating and completion percentage that year and dude had finally put it all together and kind of figured it all out and on his last play he made the right play he threw it perfectly you couldn't have threw it no better Dez made the catch he made the play but it didn't go their way. After that season, due to injury, Tony only played in five games combined in his final two seasons in the NFL. But he played his every down as a Dallas Cowboy and experienced the perks and pitfalls that come along with that job. When it was all said and done, Tony Romo played nine seasons as the Cowboys starting quarterback. He made four Pro Bowls and a second team All-Pro. And despite his reputation as a choke artist from 2006 to 2016, he had the second highest fourth quarter quarterback rating among all quarterbacks. You have to remember he played in an era with prime Aaron Rodgers prime Tom Brady, prime Peyton Manning, and prime Drew Brees. Yet and still, during his run, he had the fourth highest touchdown percentage amongst quarterbacks, the second highest yards per attempt, third highest completion percentage, and the second best fourth quarter production. But he didn't come through in the biggest moments, and unfortunately, fans will probably always be saying, Tony Romo sucks. This dude was held to a standard of a first round quarterback. He went undrafted. He didn't go to a Division I 1A school. He was an FCS quarterback. Dude wasn't a perfect QB by any stretch. He wasn't the top QB in his era, but he was definitely among the best quarterbacks in the league during most of his run. And the numbers back that up. After retirement, as we all know, Tony Romo got into broadcasting and his ability to predict plays and be generally entertaining as a broadcaster quickly shot him up the ranks and he recently just became the highest paid broadcaster in the history of that industry. Now it's looking like this record may be short lived as paid man in his own deck, but still making 17 million a year to talk about football after starting in the NFL for nine years is not bad for the grandson of an immigrant who went undrafted and sat on the bench for three years once he got into the league. Look, the Romo jokes are funny, bro. They're goddamn hilarious, but 
if you can't find inspiration in this cat's story, then I don't really know what's up with you. I feel like that's a you problem. Three generations ago, his granddad was fleeing Mexico. Three generations later, Tony is making multiple millions every single year to talk about football. And even though he never could quite get it done in the biggest moments, that's an inspirational story. And I hold Romo in pretty high regard because of it. Anyway, let me know in the comment section, did this change the way you look at Tony Romo? Not at all, or maybe a little bit. Let me know. My name is Fumo Raps. I'm gonna holla at y'all next time, fellas. One. Yeah.